can discuss those who want to go into gaming or those who want to branch from the normal uh, website development and the tech things. If you want to um, experience what the game world is like, I hope this will convince you. Um, so I'll quickly say something about me and then I dive into um, the main presentation for those who don't know me. Okay. Um, do you have any remote for the Okay. <clears throat> so about me, I'll just go through. My name is Adrian Terrier, I just said it. I was born and raised in Kenya University. I was born on campus, so I was born in Kenya University Hospital. I went to Kenya University, University Primary, and the GSS. I attended. Okay, SSS was not important, so I went to Mali School, then came back to Kenya University, did my national service. At Kenya University, I would have worked in Kenya University, but then I came to Accra to start. Um, so my life has been, I'm a true citizen of Kenya University. Um, I studied science in Mali School, um, that's high school. I studied computer science in the uh, university. Then I went in AVU. Those who went to the technical class will know AVU, uh, this is a distance learning, the data learning department, where the ICT center and it was first African virtual university and then it transformed. So we were some of since JSS have been interning the I'm just sharing the people there for a long time. So I so I worked there as a teaching assistant after I completed um science. Then um, I worked at MEST. I was a, you, so you all know MEST, right? You all know North Water. So I was a teaching fellow at North Water as well. Um, so that's just a history. I'll just say a bit of my background and dive into it. Um, so my childhood was very, very interesting. I was a very happy kid. Um, that's, that's my family. A large family, that's me. The small one out there with the ribbon. Um, go next. So when I was young, I wanted to be many things, right? I, I was full of ideas, wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be the first to go to space. So from class one to class two, my dad was, I was very obsessed with space, stars and all those things. Um, then it changed around class three, class four. I wanted to be the greatest inventor, so I started building robots, breaking the toys they bought for me, and crafting stuff with personal boxes and stuff like that. Um, following, there's this book, my first experiment that my dad bought, so we were just following it. Um, then it changed again. I was a comic addict. I read every comic book. Uh, I wanted to write, to do my own comics. Oh. So I joined with a friend. I used to draw, but then I wasn't good enough. So I found a friend who was better and then partnered with him. So we started making comics. Um, so these are some of the samples of the comics we used to do in JSS. We um, started so in class five, but we started making better comics when we were in JSS, and this was what we used to draw then. Okay. Then, yeah, and then I wanted to make games for those comics. So that's how the gaming passion came. I was a game addict, but then I had a lot of comics, and inside those comics, they advertised games, like Sega would say, play um, Batman on Sega Master System, Sega Mega Drive, or play Batman on Super Nintendo. So I wanted to have that advert in my comic that play Street Warriors or Sword of Cygos in something. I don't know. I just wanted to have that. So that's what uh, made me learn how to build games. So I worried that you have to and stuff like that. You, know, you have to be very best. I was very annoyed when I was a kid. Okay. Um, so I think that is it. So let's dive straight into um, the gaming trends in Africa. Um, so, you know, in Africa, there are so many countries. There are like 55 countries, 3,000 cultures, 1 billion people, right? So, 
there are a lot of diverse um, culture. We have a lot of languages. Um, so, and one billion people is a huge opportunity, right? Um, so, I'll just talk about some how gaming evolved in how game development evolved in the continent. So, in the nineties, I think this is the example. Yeah. In the nineties, this is supposed to be nineties. Okay, in the nineties, we used to play Family Com, Super Mario, you know, Center Master System. We, like we used to play games, right? There were no game development um, stuff registered there. Then in two thousand and three, there's a company called Mixit. Have you heard of Mixit? It's a messaging. It, it is now a messaging like WhatsApp in East Africa and South Africa, very huge. So Mexit actually started as a game company in 2003, right? But then they couldn't succeed, so they diverted into messaging. You know, gaming is similar to graphic gaming, it's, it's similar to this. So Mexit tried it in 2003. Um, in 2005, um, I attempted the first 3D game from um, Africa, I call it that, because so sort of cycles. So the comic I drew in DSS, I made a game for it in DSS, and then I read it in 3D um, for my senior, for my thesis in the university. So that was in 2005. Then um, in 2006, we read in our newspapers here that the first 3D game has been made and it's by a game, like a game designer from Kenya and he's my business partner now. So I did in 2005, nobody heard about it. In 2006, a Kenyan did it, everyone heard about it. So I, I had to reach to him. Um, I'll send him the blog where, where I caught it. He was taking all the credit that I'm the first, I'm the first. And then that's how we met and now we have 30 games together. Then, um, then in 2007, there's a company called Numa Arcade in South Africa. And you can see that they are into, um, they also made a game. Then in, in 2009, we came out, let's see, we did Eye Warrior for the iPhone. And then uh, in 2012, now there are a lot of game companies. There's a game company in Nigeria called Malio Game. Yeah. Yeah, so like you can see the trend of how gaming companies are springing up and games are springing up. So it tells us that Africa is also making a headway in the gaming space. Okay, go next. So actually, the opportunity that there are 6.4 billion um, smartphones in, in, in the world, right? And a lot more people are going to the internet and, and a lot of people are who are using feature phones are also upgrading to their smartphones. And then mobile payments are also huge. Actually, Africa is twice um, North, North America in mobile technology because the mobile phone is huge in this part of the world. We use it a lot. They are still using cards and stuff like that. So our mobile tech is, is twice their industry. Kenya alone reported 80% of their GDP for mobile money last uh, in 2011. Okay, next. So, and in Africa too, we know that they've promised us a bandwidth of 90.2 terabits coming by 2014, which means that internet will become cheap and internet speed will be no problem by 2014. Now it's not a problem. Three years ago, in my interviews, when they asked you what Challenge you are like internet, but now internet is not a challenge anymore because you can get it from every town. Um, so the current game studio, the current game studios in the industry, I'll just mention a few. Um, so we have Ubisoft. Ubisoft actually have, has a, a studio. You know Ubisoft, right? So they also did um, uh, Prince of Persia. Like they're a huge company. So they have a studio in Morocco, the Numa Arcade 206 in South Africa, in 209 United Games, Tasty Poison, there's a company in South Africa called Afros, these two are from South Africa, so United Games is Ghana, Kenya. 
Um, and then Kola Studios is from Uganda. And then Malio, in 2012, Malio and Kumia, they are from Nigeria. So you can see that like, the gaming companies are springing up. So in about a year, we want, we like to see about 40 game companies or 50 game companies to come from Africa. And then we can also start from people to challenge because gaming is bigger than the music and the movie industry combined in the US. That's what is driving the economy there now. So that's the vacuum that Africa is using, a new dimension. Um, so go next. So current culture in Africa's emerging game industry is this, right? People are playing games and we are all gathering. Hey, hit him! Go, no, go, no, go, no, go, no. So, so that's how, that's how we, that's how gaming is huge here, right? Like game events, people are watching. But the development is now taking shape gradually. So definitely we have game enthusiasts, people who watch games, Plus, plus people are playing. Yeah. So um, if you look at the look and feel of games now, if you study the space now, you can realize that in companies from North and South Africa, their games are a bit look like the Western games. You know, they have um, advanced technology and actually value games. And then they are skewed to the western side, right? But if you look at games that come from Eastern and West Africa, we try to localize, we understand like the localization concept of our game. So we try to make very local games. Like, like our area, we try to make it look like a safari. Mali also has very local games. And Gruya also just made a game or got at the top, which was also very nice. So so like the West, East and West are taking localized games seriously, right? The South and the North are normally just porting, they are like clones of the Western world. So that's also um, um, So observation of revenue. So people will wonder, how is the gaming space like? Do we make money at all? And the good thing is that since we are originators, yes, um, we are not huge, like, we are not making money because it's a, it's a nascent industry. There is no app store successes. There is no angry players that has one billion downloads from an app store. Because, because we are now building, so there is no portal. Uh, portal. So the global money is huge, is now coming. So probably in the next two years, we can also be recording successes so of one billion downloads uh, in a day, you know, those, those sort of things. So, Making your own game and putting out there is still under research. Like you have to write the papers until it becomes very big, right? Because Angry Birds, they made how many games? 56 or 52 games before the Angry Birds was the 53rd game to make the hit. So like we are also we also write a couple of stories before a success will be written. But currently, at the company end, they are understanding games. So companies. Game companies are sustained by huge companies paying us money to make games for them. So you survive by doing contract work for companies with your game, and then you, you, you reinvest that in building your own vision for your um, game. So averaging $5,000 per platform, that's how the industry is like. So if a company comes to you that, hey, I need a game, yeah, you can charge depending on the complexity, average it should be like $5,000 per, per platform in the gaming space if you have the expenses. Okay, so these are some of the game associations in Africa now. Um, IGDA is the International Game Developers Association, right? So what, um, we are starting the Ghana chapter. We've started, but it's not official. So we have, I already started in about two months, but it's in Cape Coast. Um, the idea of IGDA, the IGDA Nigeria as well, uh, which we are collaborating. So the idea about this is that IGDA is a huge body, which, but it's not for profit. So you can, when you are part of it, you can apply for scholarships. Like you know, students, when students are part of this network, you have opportunities. You can meet very big game gurus in the space. You have um, people that, that, that you can follow to bounce ideas. 
you can apply for grants. Like, it's a huge body. So once we officialize the Ghana IGDA, you will hear us a, a lot. So I think one of some of my interns have started um, IGDA in Cape Coast and KNU. I think Cape Coast is the one that is working very well in class and they are going to St. Augustine by the SSS. That's the focus to train people in game, game development. Um, so yeah, these these associations are good to join. So when they come, you can just associate yourself. Uh, so some some events. Actually, this presentation was a, a worldwide presentation of the space. So it's good. I'm giving it here again for you to see what we have done in San Francisco for people to for investors to start seeing that hey, something is coming up from this part of the world. We start bringing money. So. That is how it is. So these are some events that happen around Africa. We have the Rage Expo, which is apparently huge in South Africa. South Africa is not Africa, but then it is in Africa. So gain by telling them, hey, South Africa has it. And South Africa has it. That is the big thing. So they have about, yeah, the first two, and then Niger Game Evo. Niger Game Evo is organized by um, the guy who, who founded IGD in Nigeria. Um, it's also called the Game Campus in Senegal, founded by another guy who is also a game enthusiast. So we are coming up gradually and building this network. Right? So if you want to join the story from the beginning, you just have to dive in and work with us. Um, so these are some statistics from the Niger Game Review. They have, they've had four events so far. Right? Um, the first event, you will see the male, um, you will see the total and the male and then the female. You see how the female trend, it means that maybe a geek, the geeks, we are not too good at getting girlfriends. So mostly the girlfriends of the geeks who play games are the attendees of the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you can see 10, 27, 20, 30. It's not that encouraging, right? <laughs> so we would like to you know, to also join the, the gaming community. Um, these, these statistics are good to know, right? For you to see that our actual people are recognizing um, games. Okay, now video game studies. Actually, video game studies, you know, because for the East and West, we don't re uh, record a lot of studies in our universities. Even computer studies is not enough in our universities. And then you come and add video games. <laughs> but then in Morocco, in South Africa, they have courses for educated video games. Um, so we hope that in the next two, three years, we will build gaming to a certain point where people can, um, where universities will accept. That is my vision to, to bring in game development courses within computer science and the creative world. Okay. But that doesn't mean we don't have publications. So one of my employees now also did a couple from Manchester University. He wrote uh, his thesis in games, which is flow in games. I'm very proud of him because his book has just been published with an international publisher. Right, so uh, I also did my thesis in 3D gaming, sort of Cyrus in games, and then my co-founder also. When you Google, we are in a, a very big book recommended for every investor. It's called Video Games, Video Games and Culture, and and it's very impressive. So we are in that book as part of history, like gaming in Africa, which is very encouraging. So that's something good when you start something from scratch and you are very passionate about it. You, you tend to write history, which is fun. Okay. Um, so some of the organizations helping gaming, not game, but say creative industry per se, uh, like British Council is now taking initiatives. Last year I won the British Council Young Creative Independence Award. Um, so it was a stepping stone for me to introduce gaming to say that games, games are a really good um, business in Africa. Um, so, yeah, British Council is, is now getting the whole idea of okay. 
Yeah. Not Twitter. You all know of not Twitter, right? Yeah. You've heard of not Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. So I think having us in there also gives them the good thing, the, the good thing to be an, an organization working um, on gaming in Africa. There are more. Mobile web is also bad. Yeah, but we just do. So some of the challenges, I think most of you will be um, thinking, what, what challenges do we face? Or are we facing now? So scarce talent and expertise, that one is a huge challenge. Because one of our vision is to use local expertise to make games that compete globally. So we don't contract to any any France person or China, everything is made here, right? So what we do is we train our, our employees to a quality that, um, that we can work with and then we absorb it. So you intern with us, you can intern with us, ah, we never absorb you. Or you intern and you become national service, ah, then we take you if you are exceptional. So, so that is what we do. Then, yeah, internet developer resources. So, um, there are a lot of, you have to self learn. In the gaming space, you have to self learn. There are hardcore code that you have to read. But then, it's for, that's for developers. If you want to be a developer, you have to read a lot. Um, but, but there are engines that make things easier now. Um, then, the consumer side. The consumer side, because the culture isn't there, we have to build the culture. We have to tell people how to consume games, right? I can't, whilst I'm talking about games now, some, like someone is laughing in their mind, ah, why they put it in here, you know, that sort of thing. So we have to make the culture also, also um, build the culture, which is also challenging. Um, and then the markets are also fragmented. So, so you have a small, like, someone, some people playing games here, then you travel like 10 hours or 10 days before you see another group playing game. It's very difficult to build that network. But with time, we hope to bring them together. So, so um, after GDC, we realized that we have to do a GDC Africa as well. Three years ago, when I went to GDC, that, that was when they made GDC Japan. Um, You've seen, you heard of Naruto, Bleach. Yeah. So that was when Japan introduced Naruto and stuff to the world. And now Sony PlayStation is as a game for Naruto, you know, that sort of thing. So I think over here too, we can do that. Build our culture, our games, and then at the point we launch it, and then you can have those partnerships with these few giants. You know the global Thanks. Yeah, so I'll use Netty Games as a case study. What we are doing to mimic what Japan did, right? Um, so currently, like in Africa, we realize that there are two world gardens. There's education that works, and there are games. So games do work, but then um, someone who is attending school and you are playing Ampe or you are playing some, you know, it's like games is not serious. You have to work. So education really works. But games don't work very much, right? If I'm wrong, you can correct me. So what we are doing is that we want to look at the intersection. Where can we intersect education and games? So what we brainstorm, what came to mind, like African historic legends. You know, there's so much. Africa has so much um, to history, right? We have Pharaoh, we have Shaka, we have the Konanse, we have um, like a whole lot of history. Right, that you read about in school. You pick your and twelve book and it's a thousand page. Right? It's so boring, you can't connect to it. So so a current pictorial representations are like Yas and Twa, her book, this is how she's represented. Shaka the Zulu, 15 editions of video cassette. Have you ever finished watching Shaka the Zulu since you were? They show it on GTV. Ah, it never ends. <laughs> Pharaoh, at least I like Moses' story of Pharaoh, but then they also have, it's fragmented, you understand? So what we are doing is to retell this history in the form of comics and games. 
right? So we build our own superheroes from these legends, and then we make the games for them, right? So with that, we tell the story of Glass and Twelve in the form of a comic, or Shaka Desu in the form of a comic, and then we build video games for them, which is relevant. So, so that is that is what that is what um, we, we are trying to do with the jet. Um, so, so from like from this, we we know we we'll have more patronage of African history. People will be excited to read a Yasanja comic or something, or see a Superman and Superman calling, "Hey, Anas, help me battle um, <laughs> Saddam Hussein," or you know, or Batman is like. Then we have our Shaka Hawk who comes around and smashes it. So that is that's the that's the idea. Um, so with this, we think gaming will be accepted. We will get a lot of localization company because of the cultures we have. Africa was colonized in blocks. We have three thousand cultures, but maybe two thousand is French, four thousand is English. You know, so we localize a lot of companies will come up that translate. That's a big business outside. We translate um, your games to different languages, which is a big business. So I will see people setting up such such companies and then uh, businesses coming to them. Like QA companies, game testers, people who test games. They are, that's also a huge business outside. People just sit down 24 hours testing games. Okay. So not only are we building companies, but we are building an industry. So, Let's again, it's not just a company, but we have talked about what we are trying to do to help the, the, the society as well. Um, so I think, I think um, that, is, that is what I have for you. Um, thank you very much. That's the presentation we had um, in San Francisco. Um, yeah, more, like, more or less about the gaming landscape in Africa. So that is uh, that's the first one. How much time do I have?